along with lead gn i am i also gave my igbc ap and griha cp later so uh, i just wanted to tell that lead once you do lead ga i think all other exams are pretty easy so uh, i just told you that i did it in september uh, my my major target was um, of giving it right away after my uh, after the classes because what happens is we generally tend to uh, give the exam after 2 3 months and in that buffer period you tend to lose all the knowledge that you just acquired and all the concepts you you they are not fresh in your mind so uh, i believe uh, in my two weeks lecture series which were very informative uh, what i did was um, today if my uh, lecture was on material and resources i uh, post my lecture um, i re uh, basically i read uh, read everything again like the notes and the pdf the lecture ppt that they share which makes me ready enough to give uh, the mock test again uh, uh, the the subject mock mock test like the credit categories mock test that d2o gives so uh, so let me just go to the next page one second yeah so uh, what i did was like today if i finish uh, lead uh, sustainable site uh, i used to study the entire pdf and the ppt again and then uh, give the mock test which uh, was shared by the faculty of t2o uh, that helped me uh, get a good gr grasp of all the concepts and i i think uh, my last day was on 24th august and i gave the exam on 20th september so in a span of 25 days giving or uh, two days per uh, credit category i think it took good 18 days for a thorough revision of entire portion and then the in the last 3 4 months uh, sorry in the in the last 3 4 days i only gave uh, mock tests uh, not necessary you just repeatedly give the test of d2o d2o gives classic uh, a combination of 100 questions and i think they are just apt but uh, i in 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 addition to that i also went online and there are i think uh, you you'll get couple of uh, free resources wherein you can actually uh, get a lot of mock tests available on the internet and on the youtube as well so i in in i think in my last uh, in in my final week i uh, along with ditto i also uh, studied from that and uh, my one um, technique was uh, being in the sustainability field i uh, also uh, asked about the exam to few of my uh, colleagues who had given the exam and i learned through their experience or how they they would have prepared and uh, tried uh, you know um, following their steps i tried doing the same things that they did at their time so i think good 20 days of topic wise revision would be enough and after that 5 6 um, days to just go through the mock test um coming to the next part the type of questions uh in my question set uh, i i got um, questions majorly on the first topic which is the uh, which speaks about Uh, gbci usgbc and when did they come what what, what is the project type for registering what are the fees the lead uh, share it lead volume program irata hard cost soft cost then uh, they also asked me about lead uh, sorry about lcc analysis and uh, lc assessment so uh, all of this from the first uh, like which comes as a introduction in the manual is very much important because uh, we generally tend to focus on the credit categories which which anyway uh, will ask you 10 12 questions as per the sections but the lead introduction is pretty easy because uh, if you if you go through the questions of this section uh, once you understand the concept you will not find the same question repeating in the exam they will twist and uh, ask so not necessary that if if that question has come on to you on the mock test as something else it might come just as that in the final test because a uh, lead is just about understanding the concepts in depth so um the later sections will have all the questions twisted and asked to you which might get bit tricky but lead introduction uh, portion 
uh, cannot actually twist because everything is uh, set under some protocols. So if you uh, actually try to get those uh, 10, 11 questions of lead introduction, you are pretty much set off of, like for a good start. Um, also, uh, I would like to mention that uh, please uh, get to know like uh, where is the logo of lead actually needed and you know those details uh, if it is okay on a letter or or it is okay on a business card or not because these questions seem very easy but you tend to forget them because all of the time we have just uh, pressurized and forced ourselves into learning the concepts of the later portions so that's my first thing then in location and transportation i have just listed down my uh, sections um, wherein i got most of the questions from in sustainable sites um, I, I might say that uh, 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 sorry in the in the water efficiency i might say that outdoor water use reduction along with the flow floor uh, rates of fixtures was also important because uh, uh, I got a uh, few questions on uh, what was the occupancy type, uh, what was the full time, um, like what was the FTE of that uh, uh, structure or something like that, or, or of that uh, occupancy of the building that it holds. Um, uh, one more thing, there are about five or six standards uh, which are for water efficiency. Uh, that is EPA Act, EPA Act 2005, Uniform Plumbing Code, International Plumbing Code. Uh, all of this you have to go through because uh, they will give you what is the full form of EPA. And at that point, uh, you might not really know. Um, in energy efficiency. Uh, uh, Shalaka, hello. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I just have a question. Uh, you know, the, uh, the first one, uh, project registration, uh, right. where you talk about fee, project type, the shirt and all that. Uh, so this is from where did you read all of this? Uh, like the material was the uh, was it the only one that was provided by D2O or did you do any additional uh, um, kind of reading? No. So I don't really remember like if it if this was in the D2O program or not. But uh, as I mentioned, I also served for uh, all the free uh, resources that I got on the Internet or on the USGBC website. So you just need to know like because there are days when they give out material for free or they give out material on a 50 percent, 70 percent discount. So uh, there was, I guess, a lead GA manual through which I um, got into like in, in depth for all of these parts. Like okay. the hard, soft cost, everything like and it also uh, mentions more about lead ND, the USGBC uh, mission, their vision. Both are different, so you might know that once you get in depth into that topic. Um, yeah, uh, and then one second uh, for the for the energy efficiency. Uh, oh yeah, and in sustainability sites, I also forgot to mention that there are different types of uh, sorry in in location and transportation there are different type land types like there are different sensitive land types and they have few five six rules under them uh, which they definitely ask like what are the different types of uh, lands which are um, which on which you need not develop so uh, i believe uh, on prime farm land on a water body you are not allowed to develop so that was also one 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 of the important question that I had. And uh, uh, if you have uh, studied the LT quality transportation, so there, there are few norms for distances from like from the bus station, from the um, uh, ferry terminal. So you need to know the distances from all of these services onto your building because uh, that is something they 100% ask. In water efficiency, I I mentioned everything, but uh, yeah, uh, the IP unit of a fixture and SI unit of a fixture is different. So you need to check and then answer which unit are they asking for. And in the energy efficiency, uh, they mainly tend to ask that uh, a, a house in USA is pretty old and uh, um, it has a refrigerator. So which of the following would you not want in the house like it's HFC, HCFC, CFC. So then you have to answer in that way, like how the question is put forward. 
in material and resources they will majorly talk about the embodied energy of uh, materials you will learn that this wednesday if i'm not wrong and they'll talk about uh, waste uh, reduction the low voc that paints might have the uh, lifestyle impact of the materials that you are using in the building so all of these uh, and, and one major thing is uh, health product declaration and environmental product declaration epd and hpd you learn that this wednesday uh, you get a lot of questions on hpd and epd uh, uh, then in the next ieq which is the indoor environmental quality uh, uh, i think you need to uh, stress more on the mer filters there are two three different mer filters which uh, uh, are um, which differ basically according to the question that they ask you uh, and uh, the other two factors are thermal comfort and acoustics smacna is just a guideline to uh for ieq so you need to uh basically go through the glossary that uh, d2o uh, sends us as a material post our course because uh, we uh, we generally tend to uh, lose um, uh, basically we we we, lose, we we give a lesser attention to these glossaries and they are the most important ones because uh, many times these uh, credit ca categories ask for uh, full form of their particular act or their particular code and at that time we don't know if that we don't know the aim of that act we don't know the full form of that act and many questions land upon this portion where they confuse you uh, so that's that's exactly my next point which is standards for all categories you need to learn them um, like there are standards like bifma or there are standards like fsc for the certif certification of wood so all of these standards is what i'm talking about and uh, uh, yeah the last point is for lead impact categories there are seven lead impact categories then there are few system goals then usg logo usgbc logo can be um, uh, used on to limited number of documents not all so you need to know on which all documents are uh is its use permitted and then what does exactly lead steering committee has in mind and what it suggests so all of this thing you need to prepare and i think i pretty much told you this earlier that once my class was over i used to make sure that everything is read twice before my next class so that one concept is done in my mind regarding a particular credit category that d2o teaches us and then i used to give my mock test right away and uh, yeah I i'm not sure if you clear your questions once you see your mock test is done or not but uh, uh, in the upcoming class i used to clear all my doubts right away so that uh, uh, you don't tend to forget and it doesn't uh, build up a pile in your mind uh, once the class is over uh, and then yeah i've just mentioned the same point in the third uh, pointer Oh uh, yeah, I studied for twenty six days and five. So I had uh, basically I had my office from ten to six. So I used to study in the night from eight to two. But twenty uh, six days, five hours each. If you're giving if you're giving full days, I think two weeks are pretty much enough. I'm saying this because I already hold a master's in sustainability. If you don't have a master's in sustainability, then uh, you give yourself one one and a half months time. Uh, I think that will be good enough. and um, yeah the internet mock tests and related pdfs you please try to find out and talk to other lead green associates through linkedin or through uh, anud sir's reference uh okay in the in the end they also give you uh, a flash card and a mock test that really build, builds your confidence and even if you um like you Uh, you can't clear your uh, uh, doubts later in the mock test just make sure that you um, dm anut sir or someone so that uh, whatever questions are wrong you can just quickly get them done before your exam and um, yeah so uh, yeah so once you decide to study uh, the dates are pretty much available every weekend because the exam is now online so you need to just take a date first once that is done you will get a formal mail from usgbc saying you need to uh, 
system check basically a system check is a online test that you do uh, to to take lead ga on your laptop so they'll just check your camera and the microphone and the internet quality and post that test is done you install the pro proctor app uh, so on the day of the exam bef uh, before uh, your exam is scheduled the pro proctor app won't open on the day of the exam you go to the uscbc website you put in your appointment number and the name and just say launch your exam the exam launches in the pro proctor app app uh, and you have uh, yeah this is basic uh, you need to um, like log in 15 minutes earlier and uh, then they uh, take your picture they need a id card picture and then they security check this is the most important uh, step uh, so security check is you need to show them your 360 degree view of the room that you are sitting in they will uh, so i was pretty much told to even show uh the the bottom of my desk and the bottom of the chair i was sitting on during the exam because they 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 do they they check everything in your uh, room and the room needs to be very clean and uh, you cannot have any written material like some people have quotes on their wall or something like that so nothing of that sort is needed in the room at that time and once that is done a usgbc uh, member who's actually checking this uh uh gives you a go gives you a final go and then you are ready for the exam you get the scores right after after the exam and you get the certificate two days uh after the exam so i think i have pretty much